Welcome to the Here's My Story channel. I'm Hannah. I caught them in the elevator as the door was closing. It was packed inside, but I somehow managed to find a spot. Normally, I never take the elevator in the subway, but the subway line I was supposed to take was three levels underground. I'd lose so much time if I were to take the stairs. Half of the people poured out onto the next floor, and the other half got out on the following one. There were only two of us left in the elevator. As the door was closing, the other person said, let me guess, your backpack is full of textbooks, right? I looked up and made eye contact with him. It was my childhood enemy, Anthony. I was about to hit him back with a, I see you haven't changed at all. You're still incredibly annoying. When the elevator came to a halt with a jerk and the lights went out. What's going on? I screamed. No need to panic. It's probably just a power cut. It'll be up and running in no time, he said. I'm not panicking. I'm trying to understand what's going on, I curtly replied. I turned on my phone's flashlight. When I held it up slightly, Anthony's face was illuminated. <laughs> he was staring at me smugly. You're all grown up, he said. You're all grown up, I mocked him, adding, you sound like my old neighbor, Aunt Judy, when she saw me after a million years. When, with the same <laughs> smug smile on his face, Anthony said, you've turned out real pretty, I was furious. No way! Ugh, what is going on tonight? I screamed, turning my phone's flashlight off. Anthony and I were in the same class for four years, and every day of those four years, he found a way to make fun of me. Thankfully, we went on to different high schools and my life was saved. But as it happens, I had to run into him in a subway elevator that night. I was trapped in a broken elevator with him. And as if that wasn't enough, he was trying to flirt with me. Oh, why is the power still out? I groaned. Suddenly, everything was illuminated. The power was back on. But a few seconds later, we heard a scary noise coming from the elevator, and the cabin fell down for a few feet. This time, it was Anthony who screamed, What's going on? Now it was my turn. Don't panic, but it looks like we're still stuck here, I said. As Anthony was about to sit on the floor, he said, It looks like you're still mad at me since you didn't skip a beat. Instead of snapping back at him, I began to hit every button in the elevator. Wasn't there supposed to be an emergency button for situations like this? But this elevator only had a button for each floor. Anthony took out a pack of cookies and bit into one of them. Hannah, you're the best student in her class, and I was teasing you a little. Now that I think about it, I, I might have overdone it a little bit. But we were so young. It's all in the past now. We can still become friends, he said. Anthony offered me the pack of cookies. I was actually kind of getting hungry, but of course I refused. Oh, I hope someone upstairs is working on fixing this elevator right now. I don't want to listen to you go on and on down here, I moaned. I need to leave as soon as possible. My mom's in surgery right now. It's serious. I went home to feed the dogs. I, I need to be in the hospital when my mom comes out, he said. What's wrong with your mom? I asked. Anthony took a deep breath. They found a tumor in her brain, and it's a really big one. They took her in for emergency surgery. It's quite risky, but she has a fantastic surgeon. He promised me he was going to take out the whole thing out of my mom's brain. I trust him. Is your mom at Elmhurst Hospital right now? I asked. <gasps> Anthony was surprised. Yes, how did you know that? I smiled and said, that's the only hospital you can take this line to, and my dad's the only neurosurgeon in that hospital. I'm going there as well. Oh, wow. Dr. Allen's your father? He asked. I nodded. My parents got divorced last year. I spend the weekends with my dad. He told me he had a long surgery today. I'm going to meet him at the hospital and we'll go to his place after, I said. Anthony stared at the floor shyly. Hannah, I, I hope you won't mention the things I've done to you to your father. He thinks I'm a good kid and I want to keep it that way. In that instant, the elevator jerked us again and swooshed us down for a few feet. This time we both screamed in fear. When the elevator got still, we looked at each other. Then we burst out laughing. <laughs> this time, since we both screamed, neither of us could look down on the other for panicking. I looked up at the ceiling. There are two scenarios. One is somebody's trying to fix the elevator, or two, no one knows we're here, the ropes are going to snap anytime, and we'll crash to the ground, I said. Anthony looked up at the ceiling as well. Do you think I'll get reception here if I climb up above the cabin? You're very brave, as usual, but we're a thousand feet below the ground. I don't think you can have reception down here, I replied. Anthony said, you think I'm brave? 
I don't know if you're aware of it, but you just said something nice about me and (laughs) smiled. I smiled back. Yes, you are. I can't deny that. Remember that day when we went on that class picnic and our teacher fainted? You didn't hesitate for a moment to go and seek help. You were the one who found those people at a nearby farm. We just cried our eyes out waiting for you. I regretted saying that the second it came out of my mouth. All my life, the name Anthony only had reminded me of bad times. But now I felt differently and didn't like it one bit. Anthony was my childhood enemy. I used to cry every night for the things he had done to me. I couldn't possibly forgive him so easily. I began to randomly hit the elevator buttons. We're in the middle of the city in a subway elevator. What are you waiting for to get us out of here? I yelled. Anthony held my arms and stopped me. You got angry with yourself for having a good thought about me, right? I took a step back to get away from him. Yes, you were a bad person back then, and I'm sure you still are. People don't change, I responded. I'm really sorry for everything I've put you through, but I have changed. And I think you know that pretty well, he said. I didn't understand what he meant. I know that? How? I asked. Anthony took a deep breath. Because... He started and stopped. Hannah, I'm going to confess something right now, but I'm scared you'll be mad at me, he said. Anthony, I think I'm all maxed out on that front. You can bet I can't get any more furious with you than I already am, I replied. Well, okay then. I... Um... You and I... We... We've been chatting on Instagram for over a year. You didn't know it was me. I hid my real identity from you, he said, and I went into shock. Ryan, I said. Are you Ryan? Anthony nodded. Yes, it's me. I'm so sorry I lied to you. I was going to come out to you one day, but I I just couldn't find the courage to do it yet. Tears started (laughs) flowing down my cheeks. How can you say that you're a good person when you've been lying to me all this time? A good person would never do something like that, I said, sobbing. Anthony looked very sad. Hannah, I might have kept who I am a secret from you, but apart from my name, I never lied to you about anything. If we had ever talked about our past, I would have confessed that to you as well, but we only talked about the present and the future. You know Ryan's a good person. Ryan is me. If Ryan's good, then Anthony's good too. I mean, he became a good person with time. Please, you gotta believe that. I didn't know what to think. My childhood enemy had made a fake Instagram profile. He had become one of my best friends with his fake identity. (laughs) Actually, even though I couldn't quite admit it, I'd had a crush on him and been looking for a chance to meet him. But he, Ryan, was actually Anthony. When the elevator began shaking, I remembered we were still stuck. This time, the elevator was moving up very slowly. It looked like we'd be out of here in a few minutes. Anthony was staring at the ground. We were both a little disappointed that the elevator had started working. I watched him until it reached its destination. If Anthony is indeed Ryan, I mean, if he was anything like Ryan, then he might have changed for the better for real. When the elevator door opened, a member of the staff asked, Are you okay? This elevator needs to be replaced. This is the fourth breakdown this week. It took us a really long time to fix it this time around. We both thanked the guy. I turned to Anthony and said, Ryan, we need to hurry if we want to catch the last train. Let's get to the hospital to find out how your mom's doing, but don't worry. I'm sure my dad did a fantastic job. Anthony laughed. (laughs) Ryan, I like this. When we got to the hospital, we ran into my dad in the hallway. He was surprised to see us together. You two know each other? He asked. I didn't say anything to him about what happened in the elevator. I told him we were in the same class from the fourth grade to the eighth. My dad put his hand on Anthony's shoulder. The tumor hadn't spread as we initially thought. The surgery went well. Your mom will be back to herself in no time, he said. Anthony held his tears back. Thank you so much, Dr. Allen, and I'm so, I'm so sorry, he said. My dad was surprised. Why are you apologizing, son? He asked. I, I'm sorry for being late, was all Anthony could say in the end. But I knew why he apologized. He wanted to apologize to my father for all the things that he'd done to his daughter. We went down to the cafeteria to eat as we were waiting for Anthony's mom to wake up. As I was talking to him, I realized that he had truly grown up and changed. Anthony really was Ryan. I think you all know where this is going. We're currently dating and our relationship is not bad at all. 
I crack up whenever I think about how this all started with us getting stuck in an elevator. Now, I always choose to take the subway elevator instead of the escalator because I believe that it will bring me good luck. 